For many airlines, premium economy with roomier seats and much better food has proven to be a profitable trend. 15 of the 20 largest airlines with international flights now offer premium economy seats. The one big exception, U.S. Airlines. Here with the story is WSJ middle seat columnist Scott McCartney. Hi, Scott. Great to see you. Good to see you, Tanya. So, Scott, what are the kinds of amenities now being offered in these premium economy cabins? You know, it's really pretty extensive. Uh, you, you certainly get more legroom, um, but more seat width, um, more recline in the seat. Uh, you get welcome amenities such as uh, champagne cocktails, amenity kit. Uh, you get bigger baggage allowances. You get in some cases, much better food service. It, it, it truly is a hybrid between uh, cramped coach and, and kind of elegant business class. It sounds pretty good to me. Which international airlines have recently added premium economy? So there were, there were kind of two big holdouts internationally, uh, Singapore and Lufthansa, both big uh, long haul carriers. Um, and uh, they both added it now. Lufthansa uh, is flying it on many of their planes. They'll finish their transition by October. Uh, Singapore starts uh, Los Angeles out of Los Angeles on December 1st, um, and they've both brought uh, some some innovation to it. Um, uh, Lufthansa uh, really focused on seat width. Um, they have a six-inch center console between their seats. Their their research found uh, what people really didn't want to do was uh, to be touching the person <laughs> next to them. And, <laughs> and, and, and Singapore created a whole new class of meals um, engineered to fit into economy trays, but uh, uh, really some nice, uh, really tasty food that uh, a lot of it comes out of the business class cabin. That sounds great to me. So what is the price difference between a typical economy seat, a premium economy seat and a business class ticket? You can generally think of it as 50% uh, more um, uh, roughly than a, than a coach ticket. Um, so some of the prices we looked at, so Lufthansa says that what they found in their research was customers wanted as kind of a fixed price. So they charge uh, $600 to $700 more than coach for a round trip. So if your uh, coach ticket would be $1,200, the, uh, the premium economy would be about $1,800, $1,900. Yeah. And that's, that's pretty well uh, kind of the range that other airlines follow. I can see that being worth it, especially when you compare that to the jump that you would have to pay to go business class. Yeah, it, it, business class can be four, five, six, seven thousand dollars, um, and uh, you know if it's a twelve-hour flight or a ten-hour flight, um, uh, three hundred dollars each way more for uh, for that kind of comfort for the ability to sleep um, can be uh, really something worthwhile. It's very popular with. Um, affluent travelers, older travelers, um, va vacationers, but also uh, small business folks. You know, a lot of companies just won't allow business class. And, right. uh, and so they've been the ones pushing airlines to uh, give us something affordable that, uh, you know, will allow travelers to arrive um, in decent shape. And I know a lot of travelers would be willing to sort of pay the bump themselves if their company pays for coach. Some people are even willing to shell out for that little bump just to have a that much of a nicer trip. Yeah, yeah, that's right. You can get some of it back in bigger baggage allowance mm -hmm. and things like that. You know, if you avoid some baggage fees and, uh, you know, uh, other other things. Uh, Lufthansa also, if you fly premium economy, will allow you to pay a fee to use their lounge, use their arrivals lounge. That can be really valuable to have a place at the airport to go shower and get breakfast and get on your way. So, Scott, clearly there's a demand for this. Clearly these airlines are saying it's profitable or they wouldn't be doing it. So why haven't the U.S. airlines followed suit? You know, I, th I think it's a, a sort of a transition issue. Um, they've been focused on really improving their business class cabins. Um, Lufthansa faced the same thing. They, they felt like they had to uh, really up their business class game uh, before they could put something in between uh, coach and business class. And, and so the U.S. airlines have been focused on lie flat seats, uh, getting, getting their business class up to international standards. Um, they've also been focused on, on profitability, and so it's been hard to invest in, in a new product. Uh, I think they're still trying to find their way um, in some of the premium cabins. Right. Um, but I, I think it, it has proven, some airlines are saying premium economy is the most profitable section of the airplane per square inch. 
um, there's a real business opportunity for airlines, and, and certainly in the U.S. <laughs> carriers, where where coach is really cramped. Yes. Uh, a lot of people who are willing to pay, you know, something more for something oh. better, but, but not all the way up to business class. Tell me about it, Scott. Sometimes I feel like flying coach on certain U.S. airlines is a race to the bottom. Amenities keep getting taken away, and there's no price cut to show for it. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. Uh, it's a, you know, it's an expensive proposition, and you know, 10 hours in a 31-inch seat. Uh, if yeah. you're if you're six feet tall, um, that, that's really tough. And uh, so six inches more legroom, two inches more seat width, um, you know, better meals, everything else, $600. A lot of people say, sign me up. I'd welcome it as well. Scott, thank you so much for that. Sure. Take care.